now I say treaty because it was not exactly what you'd call a fair deal. Um, this is a copy of a copy of that treaty, actually. Um, Mr. Pell got 50,000 acres of land, which is all of what is now the Bronx going to Mamaroneck in Westchester County. And in return, the Lenape received a couple barrels of rum. Oh. Um, and ultimately, of course, pushed off the land um, for the British to colonize this area. The Dutch were in you know, lower Manhattan until the British came in and took over. Mr. Pell was actually one of the gentlemen who came in with the British Navy under the Duke of York to take New York from the Dutch. There's a Pell Street named after him in lower Manhattan as well. So after the English came and took it from the Dutch, he was granted the official first lordship of the manor by the British crown for this land that he had acquired. Um, so as we head up to the American Revolution, Pell himself never lived here, but several generations of his family did. And during the time of the revolution, they were not in favor of breaking away from the British crown. So they were loyalists. So as the patriots came up this way toward the Battle of White Plains, all of the loyalists that lived in this area actually fled to British-occupied Manhattan for safety. And the original manor house that was built here was burned down during that time. So a couple of generations later, a descendant of the Pells by the name of Robert Barto came back. Um, he was living in Lower Manhattan with his wife, Mariah Lorillard Barto. Um, and repurchased 232 acres of this land. Um, in 1836, he and his wife began to build this house. It took six years to build, and they moved in in 1842. So at that time, they had four children. Mrs. Bartow was pregnant with her fifth, and then they would go on to have two more after they moved into the house. So seven children, very large family. Mm -hmm. um, the house itself, as you walked up to it, you probably saw it's very uh, rectangular, very symmetrical. That's called the late federal style. But the inside is done in the Greek Revival. So I'll point out a couple of things here if you want to take a look in the entryway because there's some um, defining characteristics with that. So if you look up top, that's called denticulated molding or dental molding. It looks like teeth, which makes it easier to remember. We have the triangular pediments and the pilasters going down on most of the doors, especially here on the first floor. The medallion that's above us is in the shape of lotus leaves. The floor covering that we're standing on is actually modern. Um, this was hand painted by a man in 2013, but it mimics the floor covering in the Greek Revival style that the Bartos might have had at that time. But theirs would have been um, an oil cloth. So that's a canvas dipped in linseed oil to protect the floors that were underneath it. Um, and this is in the sort of, that design on the ends there is called the Greek key. And then these medallions are sort of in that mosaic style of the uh, Greek Revival. Um, I can't ask you to stand underneath it, but this freestanding spiral staircase is pretty much the most striking feature here. If you can, get a look up. It's pretty cool because it's not supported by anything, um, and it is an elliptical shape. It's meant to mimic the inside of a conch shell. The seashell was a very popular motif during the Greek revival of that time as well. Um, this object here, this is on loan to us from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's a freestanding folk show. Um, so it, uh, it, when the bars are built here, this is not their original stove, but they would have had one here and it had a, a chimney moved out at the time that it was covered over later. But very much in the Greek revival, with these printed in columns, um, the urn shape here, and the decorative iron work. This actually served to both heat and humidify the house. So we put the fuel down here and we actually put water in this vessel so that it, yeah, so it humidifies and heats. And it's got radiation, so it's very warm. So when the bars were it was a time of what was called calling card culture. So if you wanted to visit some 